today's lesson is called Build the Machine or Die. <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, build the machine. She suggested, hey, why don't we have the associate? Last week I was on a call with my good friend and attorney, Greg Nelson. Yeah. Greg's a super smart and successful attorney who owns his own law firm. But just like most business owners, Greg tends to get overly involved and bogged down by some of the day-to-day details of his business. So it's almost like even if sometimes you take more than an hour to go through the emails, it's with the intent of working on the business versus in the business, which working on the business takes more time, as you mentioned before. Like sometimes you'll just handle something because it's faster. But when you take care of things personally, you're not creating the system and process, the machine, as I like to call it, that will then work for you while you're sleeping or in Europe or playing golf or whatever, right? Right. Like today, I spent an hour talking to this guy that I hired recently as like a employee slash partner. I don't mind putting that time into him because that one hour will probably give me back 100 hours down in the long term, right? Right. I'll check my email quite frequently, but it's only because I know 90% of the emails I get are going to be directly from team members that are already working on something that have already resolved it in their mind. And I'm just going to be confirming and or giving a little bit of feedback. Calls and emails are probably what you spend most of your time doing, right? I don't mind calls if I if I don't have emails and work piling up behind me. Well, you don't mind calls that are helping you work on your business. Because if you're spending 50 hours a week on calls that aren't helping you grow your business, you're just playing whack-a-mole, that's going to be the same thing as email, right? Mm-hmm. So I probably spend 75 to 80% of my time each week I mean, right now we're growing something, so it's probably a little more time. But number one, I usually can work if I want, you know, 20, 10, 20 hours a week, maybe 30, and be totally fine, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So that's number one, you want to get there, right? Number two, the 20 hours a week that you are working, the goal, I I think, for you, and this is my goal, this is what I do, I'm spending probably 75, 80% of my time working on my business, working on improving things, not working in my business being in your inbox a little bit working with your team working with people is fine as long as it's people are getting back to you they're telling you what they're going to do they're kind of following the rules that you're setting up if you will the rules that you set up for the game that you're playing like you kind of told me the game you want to play which is similar to the game i like to play so we just want to make sure that you're setting up those rules and that when you're working on your business that is creating those rules making sure people know those rules and then you following your own rules and other people following your rules And if you change your rules, that's fine, but just know that you're changing those versus just kind of going with the flow because that's what what happened. You want to make sure everyone else is dealing with these problems as much as humanly possible. So an app like Boomerang, where you still have those come back to you, will help you not try to solve everything. Good point. It's the most simple app I've ever used. I use Boomerang on more emails than I reply to. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Okay. I'll pay attention to that. Have fun in Europe. I really appreciate your time, Justin. Say hi to everybody. Okay, we'll see you guys. Right. Bye. Bye. The next day, I was talking to Eric Fisher, and we got on the same topic. 90% of my time, uh, well, as I'm making the podcast, I guess it's more like 75. 75% of my time is working on my business. A lot of people work in their business. Like My goal is to always work on the business. That next giving feedback to people, hearing what, what they think, bringing on the right people, doing stuff like that. I like to work on my business or leverage things, which is, to me, podcasting is leverage. Anyway, I'm getting in the weeds a little bit, but... (laughs) um, Yeah. Yeah. That afternoon and evening, I went snorkeling with Tara at Shark's Cove while the kids frolicked in the ocean in the sand, and then we headed up the road and did some cliff jumping at the famous rock in Waimea Bay. After that, we went to get some grub at some local food trucks. As I sat there, I thought, this is everything I ever wanted. Traveling the world, working for a few hours a day, and then going out and exploring with my family. It reminded me of earlier when we were snorkeling, and there was a little bit of a surge. And there we were with all these fish going back and forth with this flow. Although I had felt something similar at different times in my life, I thought this is it. I'm going with the flow. I'm going with what we wanted to do. We took the leap. We put in the work. We took the risk. And then we sold everything and we left. And I just knew from here on out, everything was going to be different. 
This is why we had done everything that we did. I was truly living my dream. There had been times when I was working a lot and it was hard trying to pay the bills, trying to figure things out. And then there were times when we sold our business and we had plenty of money and we had the big house and all the different things. And that was cool for a while, but after a little bit, it wasn't as fulfilling. So here we were now doing Millionaire University, waking up in the morning, doing some exercise, working for a few hours, and then going out and having a great time with the family. It was the perfect combination of exercise and work and play and fulfillment. It was just everything I wanted, everything I ever dreamed of. And I was determined to keep it this way. Little did I know that just a few days later, everything would change. Are we recording this for a marriage therapist or for a podcast? <laughs> sometimes we don't record our most vulnerable moments, and sometimes those little parts of that are... The best part? Yeah, the best part, or helpful, or whatever. Yeah. So Anyone who has been following along the podcast knows that our team here at Millionaire University has been growing. And along with that, the initiatives that we are taking on have been growing as well. Our podcast has been growing at an insane rate, and we're at the point where we really want to go to the next level with our sponsorships. We've also been working on growing our email subscribers and improving our email communication game. And if you listened in a couple episodes ago to episode 54, you'll know that another big focus of ours has been to hire and bring on content writers so we can really improve our written content for the Millionaire University platform. Not to mention that we're constantly wanting to improve our reach through things like social media. On top of that, we've been talking about how and when we can begin to create our first program and community here at Millionaire University. So needless to say, we've been busy building and growing the MU platform and moving forward with our mission here at Millionaire University. But with all of that, creating amazing content for the podcast twice a week has been our number one priority. So last week, I had this idea. I thought it might be kind of cool to document our journey of working with Brogan and Tyson in hiring a content writer, which you can check out in episode 54. It was a good one. Now, to give a little context, a few months ago, we started working with an editor to help edit the podcast. Overall, this has been huge and saves us many hours each week in editing. But even with that, I will usually spend a good 5 to 10 hours scripting, recording, adding intros and outros, and editing the podcast. It's like the editor gets it part of the way, and I still go through it a couple of times to clean it up even more. I guess the way I see it is if thousands of people are going to take their precious time to listen to 20 minutes to an hour of what we have to say, we want to do our very best to deliver it in the best way possible. So typically, I'll send them to our editor... But I still have to edit a lot. So a couple weeks ago, I was more specific to really edit out more stuff, which he did. And it was awesome. But then the next one, I had to spend several hours editing after his edit. So my thoughts were, well, I'll just do it myself. Why spend the money? Plus, I was short on time and didn't want to wait a couple of days, etc. So this was an interview I did with Tyson, who might be close to the biggest talker I know. My son, Brogan, who is a total stud, and I'd say pretty well spoken for his age. But he's young and doesn't do this stuff very often. And he says like, like a lot. And I felt ready the day before doing this interview, but we had a few meltdowns in the house that morning. So my focus was a little off. Not to mention this was my first time doing an interview since we've been on the road. And since our house was pretty small and I don't have my office studio anymore, I had to record in the front room. So Tara may or may not have been having a pretty good pep talk with one of our kids in the other room during this entire interview. And one of my kids was sick and had a really bad case of swimmer's ear and was getting water and moving about and clanking dishes in the sink, etc. And Tyson's audio wasn't great. And I forgot to give Brogan the pop filter for his mic. And yes, a bird even flew into the window right in front of Brogan and I during this interview. Needless to say, the actual interview went over 90 minutes and was kind of all over the place. Now, for anyone who has ever edited anything knows that it's not as easy as you might think. In fact, the goal is to make editing seem like it didn't take that long. Sometimes Hollywood style movies will take literally years to edit. Now, I'm not by any means a professional editor, so I'm sure there are many people who could have done this way faster and way better than me. But I had a vision of what I wanted and didn't have anyone trained well enough and ready to fulfill this mission. So it was all me. And let me tell you, this thing kicked my butt. 
I've spent a lot of time on many podcasts before, but this was the hardest one of all. With everything I had going on, I probably put in about 80 hours that week, and at least 30 of them probably went into this podcast. In fact, one night I slept for about three hours and woke up and just got back to work on editing the podcast. I worked on it for most of the weekend. Family went to the beach and I was in the car editing. Family was watching a movie and I was editing. It was insane. But I was kind of okay with it because I was creating cool content that I felt like would help people. But the next week, it started to catch up to me. I could tell I wasn't thinking straight. I wasn't as connected with Tara and my family. Here we were on this epic trip, literally by now hundreds of feet away from Waikiki Beach. And I'm just working. And when I'm not working, I'm MIA. My mind is somewhere else. So I'm trying to build the plane as I fly it. Work on my business while working in it. Now I'm irritated with people who need my help. And I'm useless when it comes to vision and thinking through things. I'm not exercising. I'm barely showering. I start to wonder why I'm doing anything. I kind of wasn't loving life. You know the feelings that sometimes creep in when you're trying to live your dreams and trying to grow a business? And then it hits me. I've got another podcast that I have to create and put together in just a few days. By now, we have thousands of people listening to each and every episode and people constantly commenting on how great it is. So the pressure to keep things going is really building. I've got to keep it going. I've got this idea for this epic podcast episode I'm going to do called Build the Machine. That's all about working on your business instead of in your business and creating a business and life that will work for you versus you for it and give you the life of your dreams. Let you do what you want with your time because you've built that business, because you've built that machine. And here I am and I can't even see the forest through the trees. I felt like such a fraud. And as I was sitting there getting ready to go to work on the next podcast and I mentioned to Tara what it's about, she already knows that it's going to take forever. But it's what I've got an outline for, and my brain isn't functioning very well, so unless anyone's got something else that's ready to go, then this is it. That same morning, I did manage to go for a run with Tara. I knew I needed it, and I vented the entire time. I try not to vent on our runs, because I know Tara really prefers to use this time to rejuvenate. And hearing from me isn't the easiest, but she could tell I really needed it, and she gave me the green light. And I just let it out, everything that's on my mind literally even questioning everything about what I'm doing. Do I even have any value to share? What's the point of sharing anything? Here I am a mess. What a fraud. Why would anyone listen to me? Why do I have anything to share? Am I even a good dad? Does everyone just see me as some kind of crazy person and they all just pretend like I'm kind of normal to appease me and make me not feel bad about myself? So there we are in this moment after I was about to get back going and feeling the weight of the world. And within minutes, Tara lifts up this yellow pad of paper, and she's like, Okay, I got it. I'm like, huh? You've got what? The podcast, she says. It's called Help. I'm married to an entrepreneur. Now, I should have been a little concerned about the title, but I did not care. And she goes into the other room and starts recording last Thursday's podcast. If you haven't yet listened to it, it is episode 55. It's called Help. I'm married to an entrepreneur. And it is incredible. Honestly, it kind of drives me crazy how fast Tara is at doing everything. But what can you do? You play the hand you're dealt. But I almost start crying. A huge burden had been lifted. This allowed me some breathing room to decompress and start feeling like a somewhat normal human being again. And to catch up on some other items. Help some of our team members. Think about bigger vision. Think about my why. Think about my family. Think about what we're trying to accomplish here at Millionaire University and get back in the right headspace. Think about having fun and living life again. I can keep doing what I'm doing, but I'm kind of maxed out. Right? Then the next day I was on a call so talking with Brian Guerin and we were talking about I mean, different things he could do to help. Systems, figure it out, eliminate, delegate, automate type guy, right? But that's why I'm talking right. to you. That's why I'm like, okay, yeah. Maybe Brian can now help with this and this. But then I'm like, oh, no, wait, Brian's maxed out, too. Sure. Right. But gun to your head, what's the one or two things that I could better help out with in addition to what I'm doing already? Well, I think it's always like, well, what is the best thing, right? The things that we're constantly talking about that we're focused on is grow the podcast and get sponsorship. Growing the podcast is going well. It just takes a lot of time. And obviously, yep. over time, we want to get more help with that in a way that makes sense. But you build the plane as you're flying it, right? But you still got to fly the plane. 
You can't build right. a plane and let the plane crash, right? So to right. me, the <laughs> flying the plane is keeping the podcast going. And then we're trying to build out everything else along the way. Mm-hmm. So podcast, growth, and sponsorships. So we're working on Tyson on getting sponsorships. I already have a call at HubSpot. Right. They reached out to us. And then we have, you know, growing the email list and we're kind of waiting on Facebook and that's cool. And at the end of the day, I'm kind of okay with that. Not like just totally taking off right now as we're building out this plane. And then the mm-hmm. other piece is the written content creation. So I feel like Melissa put together a pretty good piece of content. We had her do the one based off of the podcast that Eric Fisher and I did about podcasting. Yeah, I think I'm on that thread. I was reading that last night. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sometimes I'll include you in stuff just because I'm like, okay, I kind of want Brian to have an idea of what's going on here. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that because one of my questions for you today was um, what type of involvement do you want or need or if you need any from me on the um, content writer side of this, whether it's working with them or helping find people, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. And, oh, yeah, that's right. I included you in on the invite for the call. Did you have a chance to read, look at all what she wrote? I think I skimmed it last night. Nice bullet points. That's good. H1s, H2s. Okay. So she passes the mini test already on my end. And bullet points read really well in terms of SEO. Google yeah. crawlers love a good bulleted list. Not just yeah. crappy bullets, but actual good ones. So. Totally. In the beginning, it's a little wordy, but when she gets into everything else, how she breaks everything down, just from taking a podcast and creating this out of it, I feel like mm-hmm. it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing my, my halfway skin here. Yes, I agree yeah. with that. Do you want this brand, and I have an answer, but I want to hear yours. Um, do you want this brand to be in Justin's voice, or do you see this brand having its own voice? Millionaire University, obviously. I see ultimately it having its own voice. At okay. the beginning, yeah, that's the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> at the beginning, it's naturally going to be kind of my voice because, like Tyson mm-hmm. said in his episode, like it's like magic. You know, I, I'm taking nothing and making magic. Right. At the beginning, you've got to create a movement. And unless I pick up the guy off the street and say, hey, like I have, to, I have to share this vision and this movement and these ideas and these concepts. And over time, it's other people sharing their ideas and concepts and, and different things, but all with, with the ultimate vision in mind, I think of like Walt Disney, he had a vision and that vision lives on right. today. So it's right. like I, and now we, and then more people are going to get on board with this vision and it's going to have a life of its own over time. So, right. Right. But, but yes, ultimately the goal is Justin who, and what, that might sound crazy right now to some people. And if you tell that to people, like some of the audience members, they'll be like, no, like, cause that's what they're attached to right now. Mm-hmm. But over time, it's like, oh, now there's this Brian guy. And later on, there might be, right. you know, there's other characters that yep. come into play and, and they, they like is, the other characters as well. Right. Like, right. And this, this is a natural progression of a brand from startup to high functioning. And yeah. I've seen this. Time and again, through multiple brands that I've either followed or that my mentors across copywriting and marketing have proven is a brand starts typically as you. Like when I started Ricochet, I was Ricochet. And for the most part, I still am. But I've since in the last year kind of focused it more towards this is Ricochet. This isn't just Brian because I do have a team and now I'm hiring an ops manager. So there will be a different person involved here. And Another example is that Free Range Ranch only about a couple of weeks ago. Their email strategy is having different people in the company send emails. Now, Probably. it's all written from a copywriter, but it's in the voice of Kevin and I think the lady's name is Sucha or something. And then it's like yep. Gabby and they, yep. they change it up every week because you get to know the like Probably. four, seven people who run this business. And they all have yep. different messaging. They all have a different voice. And when they send this yep. email... The copywriter nails that. So that's an example of it going from Kevin who started this company to expanding it to multiple people and then eventually into the brand. Holy. Like this is perennial path. It's like we're going to be Millionaire University yep. and this is our brand voice. So I think we're 100%. on the, the correct path towards that. Yeah. Yeah. That is my goal. That is my vision. I like creating companies and that's kind of what I think the next podcast is going to be about a little bit. Anyway, I like creating businesses that don't necessarily need me. Right. That's, that's a real business in my opinion. Otherwise you're kind of self-employed with that. You kind of pick your own schedule. Maybe you work extra hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. It's just um, a lifestyle business. It's not a real stand yeah. up type of thing. Yeah. No, I want to create a business that could function without me. 
and I enjoy it. I enjoy creating the business. My ideal day or week life is spending time creating that, but that's just what I'm driven to do. I'm mm-hmm. a very like, let's create something. And I'm happy to work in it, AKA make the podcast for now not on my own, but do a lot of that work until that vision is more continues to grow. Anyway. Right. Definitely. So this is kind of what I envision is in an ideal world, we get a podcast going, whether that's Justin or Brian or Eric or whoever making that. We get a podcast out. We get it out a few days before we publish it. We get it to Alyssa. So we have these okay. two people writing for us. We send it to them. They get us really like robust a blog post. They get show notes. Put the podcast on there. And then we have like images and we have links and all that stuff, right? So that's I think that's part of what the call tomorrow is for. I'm like, okay, this is cool, Melissa. You created this. I'm like, how do I get this to the website? We're talking big picture, but then we're going like into the weed goal. Anytime you're trying to get something into orbit, it takes a big lift. And then when it's in orbit, it orbits, right? It's like doing its job. Right. Eventually, once again, we want to create other blog posts. But right now we have 54 podcasts that we can go back and create blog posts on. I just want to create amazing content that people naturally just want to absorb and go to and mm-hmm. check out. I, I want everyone every time like, oh man, and we also talked about holding off a little bit on launching our first Millionaire University program. A couple of weeks ago, I was saying, hey, in a couple of weeks, let's try to launch a program. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, if we launch a program in, let's call it six weeks now, yeah. I kind of feel like the plane might crash and burn. <laughs> yeah. But what else has changed since then is our downloads have gone up drastically. So I'm like, okay, before we go out and try to create this whole other thing that then is going to cause us to go away from some of the things we're focused on. I feel like let's make sure we get, let's get dialed in on, keep going on the podcast, emails, growth. Let's get sponsorships figured out. Let's get these blog posts figured out. Let's get everything solid. We'll start bringing in money. That's the whole goal of launching the thing, right? Is to bring in money. If we could bring in 25 and eventually a hundred thousand dollars, per month, that'll pay all salaries, that'll pay all the advertising we're doing. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, okay, cool. The company is literally continuing to generate its own fuel. So that'll bring in a solid income stream that we can then build off of. The day Justin wakes up or Brian wakes up and we're like, I don't know what to do today. Boom, let's go start a program. Does that make sense? Yeah, because if we're making, you know, 30 to 100 grand a month and we're covering expenses, now when we go launch a program and we have a big audience to launch it to, that's going to be gravy at that point, right? Like we can look at that almost as pure profit. Yeah, Uh, yeah. And that's that's how we start getting to a billion dollars is maintain from sponsorships and then just everything else is profit. Well, then you start to create self-liquidating offer or break even funnel mm-hmm. it's like oh we can keep spending this money because on the back end we're monetizing through sponsorships and we're just growing 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 okay now we open up the floodgates with programs and stuff like that we have a huge audience we have a huge email list it's like oh we're making 100 grand a month let's put another 10 or 15 or 20 of that towards really building our email list now facebook has let us do more and now we can advertise on google and you know, right yeah um, and as your yeah. marketing ads guy or whatever we go by. Now we have the security and knowing the money that we're spending, we can optimize the systems that are in place with the ads yes, already exactly. and just ignite it. We know that every podcast we make, we have an amazing blog post being created. People start to look at MU as like, oh man, this is the resource for all things. There are other resources out there that they may not have a coaching program. People use those resources all the time, right? So mm-hmm. we want people to start thinking of us as that. And then when we launch a program, they're just like lining up. Anyway, yep. I feel like that will relieve a lot of stress. Not that I'm like, you'll get to know my personality more and more. One minute, like, I'm top of the world, like, yeah, we got it. And next minute, like, oh, no. Yeah. I think that's my yep. entrepreneur, right? The natural yeah. entrepreneur brain at work right there. Totally. But I think that will relieve. Sometimes I'm like, oh, we got to do one podcast a week, right? Because two is just a lot. But I don't want to let go of that right now. Like, if, that, if that's going to be our main thing, let's keep the two going if we can, you know? Right. So... In my mind, if I don't feel like we have to figure out how to launch a program in a month or two or three, that relieves a lot of stress to just keep focusing on growth, focusing on monetization through sponsorship. Even right now, talking like, okay, I can, we got this. I can breathe. Yeah. I might be able to even go out and catch a few waves tonight for an hour since we're on Waikiki and I'm just in the 
hotel working, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think you've earned yourself an evening right. wave hunting. We're on the right path. It's just feeling good and everything is energetic. I think we're in a really good spot. Originally, we talked about growing the MU platform and getting sponsors for a while. And then in about nine months, about the same time, we'd be getting back from our trip, then to look at launching a program. And then a couple weeks ago, we were talking and I wasn't that overwhelmed and I felt pretty good and the traveling was going well and it wasn't that difficult, wasn't taking too much time. In fact, we had less distractions because we weren't back at home with school and other responsibilities. So we thought, hey, let's maybe do it in a couple months. And considering that was a couple weeks ago, that means that would be in about six weeks. And it was just more than I could take. In some of my past businesses, I got so burnt out that I was so done. Now I'm in a spot where I don't have to work for the money, but I really like what I do. Like when I'm in my sweet spot, I love life. That's waking up around six-ish, working for like an hour, then exercising and coming back and working from like eight to two. And I really enjoy putting in three to four hours on a Saturday. I mean, not that we're totally counting, but that's still a solid 40 hour work week. Not to mention I often listen to business and audiobooks or podcasts on my runs or while at the gym. Like I don't always work 40 hours a week, but when you're building something, I mean, you do what you got to do. It takes more time. It's different than just maintaining. And we are absolutely in the building process of Millionaire University. But the thing is, I could tell the burnout was coming on. I wasn't excited to make another podcast. In fact, I was dreading it. A topic that I was passionate about and excited to share a few days ago earlier became a burden and made me feel like a fraud. The crazy thing is, is literally just a day or two before I was consulting or talking with others about how they should work on their business and not just in their business, how they should build the machine. I was talking to Tyson about how he should give up doing some good things in order to have the things that he needed in his life. He had to have his priorities straight. And here I was doing the complete opposite. Some things had to shift. So as hard as it was to talk to Brian about putting off the launching of this program, I knew it was what had to happen. Otherwise, everything would crash and burn. Everything would eventually fall apart. There was no way I could or would keep this up at this pace. It was impossible. And as hard as it was, I had to have that awareness. If you keep adding food onto a full plate of food, eventually that food is going to fall off. You've got to either eat some of the food or take some of the food off before you can add more. So this is kind of the situation I was in. So we had to make some hard decisions. We always talk about the three main things that you can do to scale your business. The first one is eliminate. What are you doing now that you can stop doing isn't the highest and best use of your time in the moment or that you can or should or need to put off for later. Now you might be doing some really good things, so it might be really hard, but is it the best thing? The one thing that you should be doing, that you should be focusing on right now. Have things changed? What have you added that causes you to have to take something off in order to keep going, in order to keep functioning? Is it the thing you've added that you need to change? Or do you need to change, eliminate, or put off something that you're currently doing to now do the other things that you need to do? For example, helping my team. That was something that, although I'm constantly training them and trying to figure out ways where they can do things on their own, At this point in the business, I had to be there for them at times. I had to share that vision. And what that allows us to do as well is to get on a bunch of other podcasts, really promote the brand, Mm -hmm. let's build the brand out some more and then launch something. I'll go over those show notes and then feedback ready for the call tomorrow. Perfect. Have a good night. Enjoy those waves. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Then later that night, it hit me. I just felt a strong impression. Go back to doing a weekly podcast for the time being. No, I thought, no, the podcast is the best thing we got going right now. It's growing like gangbusters. Just this past week, we're now getting over 100,000 downloads per month. In fact, we're currently getting anywhere from six to 8,000 downloads per day. 8,000 downloads per day is close to a quarter million downloads per month. No, we've got to keep it going. For now, go back to doing the podcast once a week. And when I actually listened to that impression... And thought through it and imagined what it would be like. This peace came over me. And I knew that's what had to be done. I didn't tell Tara that night. Because I was trying not to have business brain and focus on that. But I told her the next morning. 
And you could just tell this peace just came over her too. It's like, yes, I can now have my husband back. We can have our trip back. This trip that we've been dreaming of and planning and thinking about our entire life, we can now actually enjoy. Once again, not that we won't be putting plenty of time into the business, but reminding us why we're doing everything that we're doing. Not to be MIA, not to be totally absent from the family, not to be disconnected, but to be here in this moment and to still do something really cool. Probably looks a little loud over there. <laughs> can't hear eating cereal. The next day we had a team call. Essentially the goal of this call, the purpose of this call was to figure out our blogging process. How we would take each podcast from creating the audio file to having an incredible podcast blog on our website. So the whole team was there. Last night, I had a vision. (laughs) (laughs) And I made the announcement. For the time being, we're going to go to doing the podcast once a week. And it felt great. Sometimes you got to take a step or two back so you can take 10 forward. Sometimes you got to go down so you can go up. ROTI, return on time invested. Truth is, I don't know if or when the podcast will go back to twice a week. In fact, there have been times when I thought maybe we'll do the podcast every day. But for the time being, once a week is what feels right. To allow us to achieve the other things we're trying to accomplish and still create really good content, both on the podcast and on our website and in other places. And eventually be able to launch a program and be able to get sponsors. We just couldn't do it all. And if we tried to do it all, nothing would get done well. I reflected on the podcast we did just a couple weeks ago. Create the game you want to play. I wasn't creating or playing the game I wanted. But just a few days prior, I was. Life was great. Sometimes it's hard to read the label on the bottle when you're in it. Here I was telling others that they needed to work more on their business and not so much in their business. And literally that same week, I ended up spending so much time doing the same thing I was teaching them not to do. Now I was feeling amazing. A huge weight had been lifted. We were going to put off creating a program for now, and we would only be doing a weekly podcast. I felt like I could breathe. I felt like I could be myself again. I felt like I could enjoy life. I felt like I could help my team. I wanted to keep doing and growing Millionaire University. Business became fun again. Didn't feel just like this big, huge burden. I didn't feel like I was a fraud. I know that every day won't be perfect, like it was a couple weeks ago in Narnia on the Big Island, or like it was last week after snorkeling and cliff jumping and being there at that food truck. But that's what I want to keep shooting for. Now, once again, it's not just about traveling the world and having lots of money. In fact, tomorrow we leave to Bali and we've been looking at the cost there and you can live in this insane, amazing place for a fraction of the cost of what we're spending here in Hawaii or what it cost us before in San Diego. But it's really all about what do you want? What are your non-negotiables? What is most important to you? Having a goal, deciding the game you want to play and then move towards playing that game. Decide the life you want to live and move towards living that life. Decide the path you want to go and move towards that path. I'll tell you what, I think we kind of knew, at least we said we knew, that this trip wasn't going to be super easy, that there would be some ups and downs, but we wanted to go for it. And even though I've started to fill some of those downs this week, I'm super glad we did. Once again, it's not about, oh, we're on this amazing trip and it's awesome and life is perfect. No, but it is what we wanted to do. And I love that we went for it. I love that we, quote unquote, took that risk. And once again, it's not about us, it's about you. What's the risk that you want to take? What's the thing that you want to do? Where do you want to be in your life? And I will say, not to be all over the place, but the most important is that you're content and love your life and love who you are and love your family where they are now. Focusing on that inner journey, because I tell you what, if you don't get the inner journey figured out, you will never love the outer journey. But I think a part of the inner journey is doing the things you want in spite of the fear, in spite of the things that hold you back. Going after your dreams. Because getting married, having kids, starting a business, dropping out of college when everyone else told me I shouldn't. For someone else, it might be going to college when they didn't think it was possible. It's specific to you, but it's doing those things. And then 
as the title of this podcast, Building the Machine, constantly thinking about the things that you can do to create something that will work for you regardless of what you're doing. That's what it's all about. But it's not about building the machine to build the machine. If you build the machine and then you forget or lose the purpose of why you're building the machine, then it's all for naught. The cool thing and the exciting thing is there have been times in the past where I would allow what happened for part of this past week to go on for months, but to be able to recognize that and see that something needed to change and then to have the courage to move forward with those changes in spite of wondering what people would think or if you're going to let people down, but doing it because you know it's right for you, that's what you want to do. All right. Speaking of what's right for you, we got to wrap this thing up. I'm trying to record as much as I can right now because tomorrow we're heading to Bali. So we have an 18 hour flight. Somebody doing a lot of editing on the plane. But those are the two things I want you to keep in mind. Build the machine. Constantly be thinking about how can I grow something? How can I build something that can work without me? Don't get me wrong. Sometimes you've got to be involved, especially at the beginning. No one's going to go build it for you, but focus on building something versus just doing something that you're going to do again and again every day after day after day. Don't trade hours for dollars. Build something that will then give back to you again and again and again, and then create that life that you want to live. Most importantly, be aware. Tara talked about in the last episode what it's like living with an entrepreneur, and man, That episode made me cry. It kind of ruffled my feathers a little bit. But it was so cool to hear after 19 years of us being together and running these businesses together. It's like, wow, she gets me. She knows I'm not perfect, but she's okay with that. And then vice versa. She has her imperfections. I have my imperfections. She's awesome. I'm awesome. Love yourself. Love your person appreciate those around you, know your strengths and weaknesses, build the machine, build the machine, and create and live the life you want to live. It's towards the end of the day. That's what I'm going to do right now. This is our last night in Hawaii. We're going to make it count. Plus, we got to pack. All right, guys, get out there, make something happen. It's not easy. Building it isn't easy. But it can be a lot of fun, especially if you have that end vision in mind. But remember, while you're building it, don't take your eye off the ball. Don't take your eye off of what matters most. A lot of times people talk about how their why is their family and this and that and the other. But then they totally get to work and exclude them and don't focus on them or get irritated with them. I'm I'm guilty, guilty right here. So make sure that doesn't happen. Make sure part of the game that you're playing, part of the rules that you set up is to create a certain life that includes the things that are most important to you. Do that. And no matter what struggles you have, you cannot lose. You will succeed. This is Justin Williams, Chief Build the Machine, Chief Build the Family Officer, signing off. Until next time, I bid you farewell. Class dismissed. 